Hey everyone, what's going on? If you're new to the channel, what I talk about is how the world that we live in is made up with mathematics. And if you understand ancient knowledge practices, you can get a better understanding of the world that we're living in. And you'll see all of these things that happen in your own life and how everything in this world is truly interrelated. But there are also people in this world who have a way bigger understanding of this knowledge and they have been using it to rule over the masses. They control the mainstream media, they control our sports leagues, our told history, and so on. And somehow, by understanding this knowledge, they are able to manipulate the minds of the rest of the world and continually rule over us with this. There's an ancient knowledge practice called Hermeticism that has a belief that everything has a vibration, including letters and numbers and signs and symbols. And, you know, when they put these things in front of you, they can manipulate the way that the world works. They can manipulate the mathematics, and also the vibration. So, all of that being said, check out some links in the description. We recently, and don't you just find this odd, we had two suicides of Stoneman Douglas survivors, and then now today, we got a story of the Sandy Hook father who supposedly killed himself. What are the odds that this would happen within a three-day span, you know? Or that's what they told us. That's when the, the media broke about these stories. All of a sudden, we're getting all these deaths of people that weren't necessarily involved in the shooting, but they were, you know, indirectly involved. And just right away, look at this story. So this girl, Sydney, whatever her name is, however you pronounce it, Ayo. If you look her up, she actually died 49 days after her birthday and she supposedly killed herself because of her friend dying in San in uh stoneman douglas and her friend was this meadow jade pollock and look she died four months and nine days after her birthday so now we get sydney Ayo dying 49 days after her birthday and she killed herself because of her friend who died four months and nine days after her birthday and that girl's father also was born on the 49th day of the year and the word valentines in what is called gematria the practice of coding numbers into words and phrases that you know it's esoteric knowledge that people the rest of the world doesn't know about you know that equals 49 and you know now today we got the story of this dad from Sandy Hook who died, and notice how old he was. He was 49 years old. Right? What are the odds of all that? The dad, 49. That other girl's dad was born on the 49th day of the year. She died four months and nine days after her birthday. Sydney dies 49 days later, and the word Valentine's equals 49. Plus, just think about her name being Sydney, and then she commits suicide just after we got the attacks in New Zealand, right, and then just after the Brazil school shooting, and think about Sydney, Australia, the the Britain guy who supposedly shot up the mosques in uh, New Zealand, he was from Australia as well. Think about Sydney and Australia, and there's some other interesting things about that guy that hopefully I'll show here in a little bit, because... It syncs up to the last video that I just put out, and I talked about this movie, The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, and it it's to the Ottoman Empire, which is, you know, the area of Turkey, and it's really important. Turkey is equals 310 in Gematria, and The Adventures of Baron Munchausen came out on the date of 310. And if you notice, I even put 310 in the title of this post because it's a really important number to a lot of things that are going on. But let's further look at this girl's story. So 
this girl, she supposedly committed suicide on the 17th day of March at the age of 19. And both of these numbers were really, really important in the Stoneman Douglas shooting. If Remember, it was all about 17. There were 17 victims, or 17 killed, 17 injured. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas died one month and seven days after her birthday. We also had the uh, Joaquin Oliver kid who was buried on the 17th day of February, just like, you know, less than two days after. You know, the shooting happened on Valentine's Day and he was buried on the 17th, which is odd, but he was buried in a Dwayne Wade jersey. And Dwayne Wade, born on the 17th day of the year, the word NBA equals 17. That, that, that kid's also a, was a, this girl also knew that kid as well. But, you know, then we had like the Chicago Cubs game when they played Miami that they did the tribute where it went 17 innings and the game was scoreless until number 17, Chris Bryant hit the home run. And then the game was won by Miguel Rojas in the 17th inning, who scored one month and seven days before or after his birthday, you know, and, and a ton more. We also, like, David Hogg, one of the main advocates, he was 17 years old. We also had that rapper XXX Tentacion die, and he was from that same area, and he had released the album called 17, 173 Days Before. And his name equals 173. And he died on his rapper friend Trippy Red's birthday. And his name equaled 173. And I talked about how it was, they, the first posthumous song they released was called Ghostbusters with Trippy Red and him. And Ghostbusters equals 173. And in the movie Ghostbusters 2, Bill Murray says the end of the world. Is going to be on Valentine's Day and, and a bunch of other things. 173 is the 40th prime number. The word Valentine's, it's a special word because in Gematria, it has master numbers within the word. So it, it equals 40, but with the S exception, it equals 49. And because S is the only number letter that you can break down twice, S is the 19th letter, so it becomes... 1 plus 9 is 10, and then you have to break it down again. 1 plus 0 is 1, or it can just be 10. So S is special within this and within numerology. And V is also the 22nd letter, which is a master number. So it doesn't have to be broken down either. So it can be, you know, it can be 4 or 22. So Valentine's is just a special word in general in regards to this study, but... Valentine's equals 40, 49, and also 67. And the Chicago Cubs had won the World Series 67 weeks before the Valentine's Day shooting. And Anthony Rizzo, the Chicago Cubs player, who caught the last out of that World Series, he attended Stoneman Douglas, and it happened six months and seven days after his birthday, and keep in mind the word Valentine's equals 67, the Cubs beat the Cleveland Indians. Cleveland Indians equals 67 to Jabatria. The shooter was Nicholas Cruz, who was supposedly 19 years old, just like how this girl died at the age of 19. The 19th prime number is 67, and he died exactly 19 weeks after Marjorie Stoneman Douglas died. And his name, Nicholas Cruz, equals 67 to Gematria. So, you know, hopefully you understand why these numbers 17 and 19 were absolutely important to the story. Even her friend, Meadow Pollock, that died in Stoneman Douglas, supposedly, her name equals 67 in Gematria, right? And look at the picture they're showing us. This is the picture from the GoFundMe. She's wearing the shirt that says, Evolution, but... Look at it, the word love, right? Evolution is the word evil, evil, which is the backwards of love, and they even have it inside a heart, right? And think about that in regards to Valentine's Day and people getting killed on Valentine's, right? The backwards love is evil, 
and she's wearing this shirt, you know. And I even talked about it in 2018, earlier in the year, when we got the death of Chester Bennington, who was the guy from Lincoln Park. And the St. Valentine's Day massacre that happened in Chicago in 1929, I believe, or what year was that? Can't remember what year that was. I think it was 1929. Uh, that happened in Lincoln Park, Chicago. Think about that in regards to the Cubs in Chicago. And, you know, the guy from Lincoln Park died earlier in the year. Then we get the Valentine's Day Massacre. To uh, even further go with what I'm saying is why she died at the age of 19, which is the 67th prime number, and Valentine's equals 67, just like the shooter's name. And he was 19 years old, born 19 weeks after Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. She died six months and seven days after Nicholas Cruz's birthday, even. Six months, seven days. I mean, the odds of that are insane. This story also came just after that Brazil school shooting, and... What's interesting about that is that the word Brazil equals 612, just like the word Valentine in Gematria, and the Stoneman Douglas shooting was all synced up to 612. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas even died in the 612 area code, which is Minneapolis, and the Super Bowl was just held before the Stoneman Douglas shooting in Minneapolis, where the Eagles won, and the Stoneman, Stoneman Douglas Eagles Supposedly get shot up, right? But the Stoneman Douglas shooting was in the same area as it was in Florida, and it was 612 days after the Pulse nightclub shooting. And if you read out Columbine High School, it equals 612. And if you read out Dune Blaine Massacre, it equals 612. And the shooting in Brazil just so happened to fall on the anniversary of the Dune Blaine Massacre, and that's where they, you know, took away the guns in England, and think about what happened in New Zealand recently with the New Zealand shooting. So this number is really important. 612, Brazil equals 612, Valentine 612. But back when the Stoneman Douglas shooting happened, I talked about how Marilyn Manson was this big piece to all of it. Marilyn Manson He's from the same area. The band came from Fort Lauderdale, which is right in the same area as Stoneman Douglas. And if you recall, just before the Stoneman Douglas shooting, Marilyn Manson, uh, who was in the mainstream media for an article that came out on the shooter's birthday, saying that Columbine ruined his career. And think about Columbine, another school shooting. And then what happened just a few days later, the giant gun prop fell and broke Marilyn Manson's leg, and Marilyn Manson ended up come. The out he released an album in October called Hell Upside Down or Heaven Upside Down, and that album was actually supposed to be released on Valentine's Day of 2018, and then he came back in November, the same day as the Sutherland Springs Church shooting, and he got a bunch of flack for using a microphone that looked like a gun and then he had a another gun that he was pointing in on stage and whatever it was all about the gun stuff even he has a whole album called hollywood that he wrote in response to people saying that columbine was part was his fault right and he said that columbine ruined his career and that hollywood album has a song on it called Valentine's Day, even. And on his recent album, he has a song where he says, You say God, and I say say ten. And the song is called Say Ten. He's saying to say the number ten for God. Notice what the word God equals in Gematria. Ten. And he's saying, You say God, and I say say ten. Look what Satan equals. Ten. It's because in Hermeticism, everything has, you know, everything is the same and everything is also the opposite. That's why 
binary code is ones and zeros. It's all about God, right? Satan equals 10, God equals 10. The first man, Adam equals 10. He was created out of dust that equals 10. So, you know, that puts into perspective the 10 commandments. But Marilyn Manson absolutely practices Kabbalah as well. If you look it up, he has all kinds of Kabbalah concepts within his music. You know, even even some of the backup people in his band have names that are coincided with Kabbalah terms. But if, if you go way back to 2017, when I was really talking a lot about Marilyn Manson and how he's connected to Charles Manson, and the kneeling during the National Anthem, and then Charles Manson died in November that year, just after the Sutherland Springs Church shooting, that I talked about was connected to Marilyn Manson's ex-girlfriend named Rose McGowan because she was in this cult called the Children of God with River Phoenix. And when Wendy Williams collapsed on Halloween, she had Jerry O'Connell on her show. And we also had Corey Feldman in the news for his the child molestation stuff. And I talked about the movie Stand By Me and how it was important. I said, oh, maybe... We're going to see something with Will Wheaton or Kiefer Sutherland. Then we got the Sutherland Springs Church shooting. And we got a story about Will Wheaton and the mainstream media talking about the Sutherland Springs Church shooting even. So, you know, all of these things that I'm talking about are synced up. And what I mentioned with Rose McGowan was she was in his music video called Coma White, where it's about the JFK assassination. and. That syncs up to Parkland, where the Stoneman Douglas shooting happened, because JFK died at Parkland Hospital. And just before Marilyn Manson released that video, JFK Jr. had died in a plane crash. And that's why we got that Brazil story in the mainstream media and the shooting the same day Donald Trump banned the Boeing airplanes that we recently got in the news with the Ethiopian airline and the Lion Air crash, because the original Air Force One was called Columbine 2. So, it's all sicked up. All these school shootings, all of these interrelated stories that are going on within the mainstream media. And hopefully that makes sense, you know. But, another interesting thing was that on March 21st, I got this weird message on my Asia Argento video where I talked about Marilyn Manson collapsing and I re all this up. And it just seems weird that someone would just write hi to me. That's all. You know, I get lots of messages every day and it's weird that I get one that says hi and then it's got this person with, with their avatar as the one eye. And think about that in regards to all of the things that I'm talking about and covering, right? And they are a foreign person. I don't know what country they're from. I went to their channel to try to watch some of their videos, but I don't understand it. I don't know how to convert it to English. And I don't understand the, what are the I think it's Spanish or some dialect of Spanish that I, I don't understand. So, but it just seems odd they would just write hi. And I looked it up. If you go from the day that I put that video out, to the day that they commented that it was 210 days and the interesting thing about that is that their name in gematria equals 210 so they comment hi on my video 210 days after i put the video out and their name equals 210 and just the first name equals 811 which is this big number that we have been following in regards to San Francisco and the Third Temple and the Golden Gate Bridge and San Francisco, California equals 210. I just talked about this in my last video. The day before equals 210, which would be August 10th. And that's why they uh, took down the Gematronator on 112 because that's 210 days before August 10th. And remember, the Cubs played the Cleveland Indians in the World Series in 2016, and the Cleveland Indians are cursed by Rocky Colavito, who was born on August 10th. 
And the last time they won a World Series was in 1948, and the MVP was Lou Boudreau, who died on August 10th. So then I was like, what, what is this video, you know, what does it have to do with anything? And I went back and kind of looked at my video and looked at the post that I had made about it. And, you know, go figure. This video, this movie, what, what the whole thing of the, the Asia Argento stuff was she was in the Me Too movement. And then this guy, this boy, Jordan, or I can't think of the kid's name. James Jimmy Bennett or something? I'll find it. I wrote it in here somewhere. Jimmy Bennett said that, you know, he se she sexually abused him on this film. It wasn't on this film. She just sexually abused him, but she was like his mom in this film. And, you know, she was in the Me Too movement. Just like Rose McGowan was a, one of the first people in the Me Too movement. They called out Harvey Weinstein. But anyway, I just thought it was interesting. If you go back and watch the video that I'll leave in the description, this video right here, I talk, and these last three videos actually, the number 310 is really important and it's seemingly showing me the date of August 10th or August 11th. And, you know, what are the odds that that movie came out on March 10th in the United States? And, like I said earlier in the video, the uh, Adventures of Baron Munchausen that I was talking about with Robin Williams, I think I mentioned this anyway, but Robin Williams synced up to this, and Robin Williams also died on August 11th, but this movie also came out on 310 in the United States, and it's synced up to the, the Ottoman Empire, right, Baron Munchausen and the Ottoman Empire which is the area of Turkey, Turkey equals 310 in Gematria. And the Sydney guy who just shot up New Zealand, right? Or the guy who just shot up New Zealand, when you look him up, they even talk about how he was captivated with sites of battle between Christians and the Ottoman Empire. He went on another series of visits to the Balkans, and whatever else. So, this guy even has, you know, a connection to the Ottoman Empire. Once again, leading us to Turkey. Makes me think of Thanksgiving, you know. But, th th there's a lot that goes along with it, you know. So, but, just note, note, 310 is important. And it's weird that this person would comment on that. I noticed how it's connected to these things I was talking about in my previous video. And then the, the movie comes out on 310. And what happens in this movie, Marilyn Man, this boy dresses up like a girl, and then Marilyn Manson gets drunk and has sex with this boy. And think about that in regards to the child pedophilia stuff in, and the Children of Men cult that Rose McGowan was in, where... When you whacked off, you had to pretend you were whacking off to Jesus. And when you had sex, you were supposed to pretend you were having sex with Jesus. And that's why we got this, you know, we got this Ethiopian Airlines crash. And it was connected to the Lion Air crash. And Jesus is the tribe. Jesus is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And Ethiopia has the supposed second coming, according to Rastafarians who is Holly Selassie, he's the second coming of Jesus. Selassie equals 310. This airline crash happened on 310. Selassie was buried, I just realized from a message I got from Falcor 2, or he's got a thousand other names, but, <laughs> but Holly Selassie was buried 310 days before 9-11. So, 310, very, very important to what it's, what is going on and what I keep documenting over and over. Also, you know, with this New Zealand shooting, it's interesting. What I documented about with this Baron Munchausen movie was how Robin Williams is the king of the moon. And when the Stoneman Douglas shooting happened, it was just before the 49th anniversary of 
the moon landing, right? And that's also the same day that Robin Williams was born. That's the same day that Zachary K. Hubbard was born. Not the moon landing, but the the walking on the moon or whatever. 721. And there was a, we had the Falcon Heavy launch that was just before the Stoneman Douglas shooting and Falcon Heavy equals 49 and David Bowie equals 49 and it was two years and 27 days after David Bowie died, which is the 49th prime number. Just all kinds of these, I mean, I, I, there's a ton of 49 that was within it. It was all synced up to the moon and... That's why it was important, I guess, that Robin Williams was the king of the moon. Even Marjorie Stoneman Douglas died at the age of 108, and the Cubs hadn't won the World Series for 108 years. She died on 14-5, which is the day that Israel gained its independence, which is interesting with the Third Temple stuff. But Chicago, Illinois also equals 145, and the Great Chicago Fire happened I'm trying to think i believe it was 145 years after the or before the cubs had won the world series so it was important that she died then but the number 108 the moon is supposedly uh you know 108 moons away from the earth and whatnot so but once again this movie came out on 310 in the united states and what's funny is while I was writing up this blog post, I had synchronicity with the TV. Or it wasn't necessarily synchronicity, but I was writing up this blog post, and I heard the TV say August 11th, and I was like, what is going on here? And the movie Rookie of the Year just so happened to be on my TV. Like, I turn the TV on. I don't usually watch much TV, but whatever was on before, this movie came on, and... You know, what are the odds he would say August 11th? That's the day that the Henry Rowan Garter kid gets his first, he first comes into the game, right? August 11th. And I'm talking about how the Cubs are synced up to this Valentine stuff. And it's really interesting because when, before the Cubs won, I talked about how this movie was important. The movie Rookie of the Year. I talked about Daniel Stern here reviving the character of Rookie of the Year and whatever. And what I pointed out in this movie was that this kid, in the beginning, he's a Pittsburgh Pirate. Or that's what it looks like, right? The Pittsburgh Pirates. And the big thing I talked about with the Cubs winning the World Series that year was that they tied the Pittsburgh Pirates the same day as the Hoboken train wreck and Hoboken is where the first ever major league or the first ever baseball game was supposedly played. But the word tie equals 114. And if you're not Pittsburgh pirates, it equals 228. And that's the day that Harvey Keen died. He's the guy who got traded for Rocky Colavito 228 of 88. And that's the exact same day that a Roldis Chapman was born. And the Cubs picked up a Roldis Chapman earlier in that year. So I thought they'd play the Indians. But anyway, they tied the Pirates. And the word tie equals 114. That was the same day we got a train wreck with 114 people injured. Where the first ever baseball game was played. Then the Cubs went on to win the World Series. Getting their 114th win of the season. And their 114th season being called the Cubs. And they were synced up to Hillary Clinton and her deleted emails. And if you read out deleted emails, it equals 114. Then later that year, my uncle Barney died, who was a Cubs fan. And I also talked about how he went to a game of the Cubs in 2005 for his wedding anniversary on 8-8. And the Cubs played the Cincinnati Reds. And in 2005... That was the last time there was a tie in the Major League Baseball, and it was the Houston Astros tying the Cincinnati Reds 114 days before the Astros went on to the World Series to lose to the Cubs, or lose to the White Sox, who hadn't won in 88 seasons, and Curse of the Billy Goat equaled 88, my uncle took his wife, 
to the game on 8-8 against the Astros, and then he dies on January 14th? You know, what are the odds? And my neighbor, who's the biggest Cubs fan I know, was this old guy. He had a Cubs flag out his house for years, or since I moved in at least, and I've, and I've known the guy for years. He's had that thing hanging. He died, and then the girl who moved in next door was a girl I went to high school with, and her birthday is November 4th, 11-4. Like, what are the odds, you know? That's why last year was really important, because it was the 114th World Series, and so on. But just wanted to point out, talked about the Cubs in this movie, Rookie of the Year, and that I had synchronicity with while writing up this blog post about Baron Munchausen. And also, San Francisco Giants equal 114, and San Francisco 49ers equal 114. And just think about how that synced up with the Chicago, or with uh, the, the Golden Gate Bridge and whatnot. And August 11th of 1993, when this movie came out, I looked up the, the Cubs to see what who they really played and whatever. And it just so happened to be their 114th game of the season that year, because... They had a tie on their 45th game of the season just after playing San Francisco. You know, craziness. Also, this year on August 11th, the Giants are playing the Philadelphia Phillies, and the game is a tribute to the 1989 San Francisco Giants, who were the team where there was an earthquake during the World Series, where they had... The o Oakland Athletics play the San Francisco Giants. So, definitely interesting. Another uh, date that I'm I'm just wondering about is the 919. Because with this Baron Munchausen video, I really started making... Hopefully I didn't say this earlier in the video, but I really did start making these videos consistently... In August or September of 2014. I've been on YouTube for a long time. Helping other channels and whatnot. I, I made a few videos in like 2013. But really consistently making videos since 2014. And the first video I ever got a copyright claim on. Was of this video I made about Baron Munchausen. And Robin Williams. and. Also, Ramona Quimby, age 8. I know it sounds weird, but the book Ramona Quimby, age 8. And I put that video out on September 19th, which is the 262nd day of the year. And they gave it a copyright claim and made me take it off YouTube on the Ides of March, right? Think about the New Zealand shooting, also the FIU bridge collapse. And... The, a big thing I talked about in that video was Queen Elizabeth and how Queen Elizabeth was important. And it's before I really knew Gematria. I knew some Gematria at the time. You know, I knew H was the... I knew that letters and numbers were important, but I didn't realize to the extent of how important it really was until, you know, six months later when I found Zachary K. Hubbard's channel and he was decoding the news with it but i knew like h was the eighth letter and that's why h was important to you know hitler and whatnot h the neo-nazis have tattoos at 88 well h h is 88 right and i knew like the letter v i talked about how it equaled 22 and when you do the peace sign you're putting your two fingers up so it's kind of like a two 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 and stuff like that you know i did I knew that it was important, but I didn't know the exact significance of it. But it's funny how I talked about how this was synced up to Ramona Quimby and whatnot. And the word Ramona and Jabotri equals 26 and also 62. And I put this out on the 262nd day of the year. And the word Queen equals 62 and 26. And remember Queen Elizabeth? At the time I talked about that, Queen Elizabeth was born in the year 26. and she was coronated on the date of 6-2, which she became the queen on 2-6. But I didn't know that queen equals 62 and 26 at Gematria, so it just added that much more to what I was talking about. 
But anyway, you know, my first copyright claim after the 262nd day was 177 days later. And I noticed that 626 was the 177th day. I thought, how interesting, you know, kind of like 262, 626. And then I got, I I edited out the video and then I put it back. And then I got another copyright claim on the date of 68, which just so happens to be 262 days after the original video I put out on the 262nd day. And I thought, man, there's got to be something important to this, you know, 262 or 626. And I kept talking about the date of June 26, thinking there's got to be something big coming up in the media. And on that day, we got uh, gay marriage was legalized, right? Obama was the president. And think about how in 2014, a big deal was Robin Williams dying. Robin Williams in this movie, Baron Munchausen. And he synced up to, you know, he died on August 11th. Synced up to Joan Rivers' death. Joan Rivers calling Michelle Obama a tranny, right? And then think about gay marriage. So there was a lot of interesting things. And then the very next day we had Kanye West sing at Glastonbury. He sang the Bohemian Rhapsody song, right? The Queen song at Glastonbury. I have a ton of videos on this. And then, you know, this year we got the Bohemian Rhapsody movie that came out. And Kanye West visited the White House. And even funnier, you know, Kanye West's birthday, 6'8", 262 days after the 262nd day. And this year, 919 is important because it's the year 19, right? So it seems a lot more fitting this year, 91919. So I don't know. I'm just trying to figure it out, you know. If you read out Ramona Quimby, age 8, what I was actually talking about in this video, it equals 911. And remember, August 10th is the day that Tisha B'Av begins, which is the Jewish holy day, the remembrance of the destruction of the two temples. And if you write out Tisha B'Av, it equals 911. And think about the destruction of the two towers and 911, right? 911, the emergency dialing code. We get a terrorist attack on 911. And. Beverly Cleary, the lady who wrote Ramona Quimby, she turned 102 years old by, on in 2018 on the 102nd day of the year, and Al-Qaeda equals 102, and that attack supposedly lasted 102 minutes, so there's something really significant to to that original video, like way back in 2014, and how it's important, and I knew there was always a reason they banned that video. Like, I had to put it up on Vimeo or something else. And then I I edited out pieces, and I lost a big piece to that video. But, you know, Robin Williams even is in a, the King of the Moon, he's just the head, right? He's separated from his body, and then he supposedly hung himself at the age of 63. And the guy who Peter Pan is based off of supposedly jumped in front of a train and committed suicide at the age of 63. And Robin Williams is in another movie where he can't remember what it's called, but he dies, and they say, oh, he's 63 on the 63 year, and he died at the age of 63. I can't remember what it is. Some movie with, uh, oh, what is the guy's name? He plays radio. Uh, whatever the guy is. I can't think of his name for some reason. I don't want to look it up, but anyway, let's just keep going on here, because why not, you know? They're, it's all interrelated, so tonight, when I got off work, I was, when I was at work earlier, I realized something interesting, so this number 310 that I talked about in that previous video, I started off with talking about how the owner at the bar that I DJ'd the other night, his name equaled 310, and I'm friends with him, and that night he told me, that he is having a band the next night and I would really like them and I should come up to the bar, but I couldn't come up because I had to watch my, my son or whatever. And my girlfriend had to work, so I couldn't go up. But the next day he texted me and I never checked the text. I just left it on there because I didn't want to 
I just was going to pretend that I didn't get it or something, you know? Like how you kind of do when you don't want to respond sometimes, but he wrote, come up tonight, bro, and it was at 8.10 p.m. And I mean, just think about that. Think about how I'm talking about how 3.10 is showing me 8.10, and then, you know, what are the odds? So, just thought it was funny. I noticed that today at work, and today at work... I had some crazy synchronicity with Mary Poppins showing me the same thing. So I work at a gas station and when people bring in their lottery tickets, you're supposed to make them write a signature or sign it on the back of the ticket. And a lot of times I don't do that. I just, if I know the people, I just write random names on there. It's just like really fun for me. Like, you know, John Bon Jovi's been in town and George W. Bush and all kinds of people. Today, a couple of them I wrote today were the band Corn. It was like Monkey and uh, Jonathan Davis and just, I don't know, just random names that just whatever comes to my head. And some lady, I, or, or who was it? Hold on. There was some younger kid who I knew didn't work for the lottery, so I knew it wasn't a big deal. He had won like $25 on a ticket and... I wrote Mary Poppins on the back of this ticket, and I didn't, I don't know why I wrote Mary Poppins, to tell you the truth, just, that was just what came to my head, Mary Poppins, right, and I put the ticket in my little stack of tickets, and the next person who walked in was this lady and her daughter, and she was wearing this shirt that said, super califragilistic, kiss my ass adocious, and I was like, what are the odds, really? Like, I write Mary Poppins, and then, like, 30 seconds later, this lady walks in wearing a shirt that is, you know, a meme, kind of, to supercalifragilistic expialidocious that Mary Poppins sings, right? And the part where, you know, it's supposed to be funny on the shirt, I guess, the kiss my ass, if you write out kiss my ass in Gematria, it equals 135, just like Mary Poppins. And Kiss My Ass also equals 810, just like Mary Poppins in Sumerian. Kiss My Ass also equals 100, 810 in Jewish. So I know that, you know, once again, it's showing me 810. All, it's just some weird stuff, right? This stuff happens to me constantly, all day long. And I had more of the synchronicity earlier that I'm going to talk about. While I was writing up this blog post and also after I made this blog post. But I talked about how possibly it was connected to this old post I have about uh, the Simpsons episode where they did a play on Mary Poppins. Let me find it here. The Simpsons did a play on that too. Simpsons, Califragilistic, Xbiela annoyed grunches and it had this lady maggie roswell who was on it and i can't even remember it all but she was mob flanders and her birthday was the same as uh prince charles's birthday and i kept seeing a, the number 1114 a whole bunch at the time it's funny how evolution equals that and that's what the uh stoneman douglas girl was wearing that shirt it said evolution too, but I can't remember. I didn't, I need to reread the whole post, but I wondered if it was something connected to that old post. Because the Simpsons are always really, really important to what I'm talking about. And the lady who plays Mary Poppins, Julie Andrews, today was 190 days before her birthday. And the word lion equals 190. King Charles equals 190. The word pink equals 190. If you followed me for a while, you'd understand what I'm saying, but. This Maggie Roswell lady, she was also in Pretty in Pink, and I don't know, just interesting. Anyway, so I thought I'd look up Season 3, Episode 10 of The Simpsons, and I noticed that it's a parody of the TV show called Cheers. And when I had that synchronicity the other night with Clay Matthews, I was DJing at the bar called Cheers, right? My friend who owns the bar called Cheers, and his name equals 310, and he texted me at 810 the very next day, right? So, 
I knew there was something significant to it. And the reason that it was, was last night before I went to bed, I watched the movie White Men Can't Jump. And think about the TV show Cheers. And think about the movie White Men Can't Jump that stars Woody Harrelson, who's in the TV show Cheers, right? And I just, I noticed some interesting things in that movie I never noticed before. Like, he's, ta he's talking trash to the other players, and he's like, throwing up bricks, throwing up bricks. And then he says, what is this, a Mason's convention? Throwing up so many bricks or whatever. I just never noticed stuff like that before. And the at the very end of the movie, his girlfriend gets on Jeopardy, which is something I've talked about as important. We just had Alex Trebek, who's probably going to die within this year, coming out with cancer. But uh, at the very end of the movie... He gets back with her, and then he goes and plays basketball again, and she leaves for good. But they go and play the king and the duck. And if you followed what I've been saying, these themes are all just interrelated and all connected together. And, they, and he finally does a slam dunk against the king and the duck to win the game even, you know. So the climax of the movie is truly about the king and also the duck. And both of these two things, I've been talking about how they were connected together. So, I also just pointed out Woody Harrelson equals 186. Also, Molly Ringwald, who's important to that pink theme, that's important to the duck theme. Her name equals 186. And I've been documenting about this number. I haven't really talked a lot about it, but, you know, Lori Laughlin's full name equals 186. And, what well, I, I documented about her. 186 days before her birthday or something like that. Or no, her name equals 186. And then the episode with Stephanie on is all about seeing the sign. And that's the 186 episode and a bunch of other stuff. Just, just know that it's important. If you watched some previous videos, you'd get it. Woody Harrelson, 186. Molly Ringwald, 186. I also was thinking about when I looked up Woody Harrelson, I saw he was born the same day as Holly Selassie, the first day of Leo, which is the lion. And Selassie died on 827. I can't remember what I've been seeing this on, but I've seen it a few times recently. And I don't know. I just got this comment today, too, about Acts 827. It talks about Ethiopia. So. I don't know, I need to think more about it, but I remember 827 is also the 239th day of the year. If you write out Golden Gate, it equals 239. That's why Pope Francis visited the United States the 239th year of the United States. And he went to the White House on 23 slash 9, and so on. Also, in regards to the Golden Gate Bridge, I remember there was some award show where Olivia Munn mistakenly said the robot takeover is going to be on August 27th and she was referring to Terminator the movie and I've recently been talking about Triple H and how the wrestling is really important and the Terminator Genesis movie where they had the destruction on the Golden Gate Bridge and Ronda Rousey hitting uh what's her name hitting the McMahon girl can't think of her first name for some reason. In San Francisco, when the Rock had her come up, and the Rock's in San Andreas, and the Rock's in Jumanji, which connects to Robin Williams. So, 827 is also the 144th prime number, which is interesting because if you write out 44, it equals 144. The word earthquake equals 44. This number is really big around political assassination. So I, I know there's something else with 827 that I'm missing. I used to talk about that date a whole lot. I'll have to go back and look at a lot of my old info. But I feel like there was something to do with earthquakes and 827 as well from way back. So anyway, so while I was writing up this post... This whole blog post here, the I went I went to Wikipedia to make sure that the 239th day was August 27th, and when I did that, I was 
looking at this right here, it said get out. And I didn't think anything of it, but uh, when my, my cat jumped up on my lap and I was like, get out of here. And then I noticed that I was looking at get out right here. And I started laughing because I was like, oh, weird synchronicity. My cat jumps on my lap, lap and I say, get out of here, right as I'm looking at the word get out. And then right as I started laughing, the TV said, get out of here. And I was like, what are the odds, you know? So I'm looking at get out. My cat jumps on my lap. I randomly say, get out of here. I laugh about it. Then the TV says, get out of here. And it was this movie that was on. The 41-year-old virgin, whatever, knocked up for getting, I don't know, what the heck. Can't even read. The 41-year-old virgin who knocked up Sarah Marshall... And felt super bad about it. And what's interesting about this movie is that it's a play on the 40-year-old virgin. And I figured I'd go look up that movie. And, of course, that movie came out on August 11th. Like, what are the odds? August 11th. Also, this movie called Get Out that it was referring to in this post up here. This movie came out on the day leaving 310 days in the year. Right, so all of these things just keep showing me the same thing over and over. It's there is something too. I I remember a long time ago with the the movie The Forty Year Old Virgin. No, it ends with the song The Age of Aquarius. Right, and supposedly we're entering the age of Aquarius, and we're no longer going to be in the age of Pisces. And you know that's the Jesus fish and whatever. So you know it has a lot to do with Jesus. Remember, Enter the Stars years ago had a video about the movie The 40-Year-Old Virgin and how it was about Jesus as well. Just think about all this with Ethiopia and Holly Selassie and how it's all synced up, you know? So, you know, because supposedly Jesus really died at the age of 40 and not 33, and I don't know what it is. It's from a long time ago. It just has been stuck in my brain when I watched that movie. Because it was a pretty interesting video, so. I also noticed the age of Aquarius equals 210, just like San Francisco, California. Just like that person who commented earlier. And I wondered if uh, it had something to do with this old Facebook meme. I've, I've only done like five memes ever on Facebook, and one of them involved Woody Harrelson. And I wrote, hey girls, I'm Woody Harrelson. And I don't know. I, I have no clue if it's really connected, but just after documenting about this, I had some weird synchronicity that I'm going to talk about in a second that I'm positive was synced up to what I was talking about with these Facebook memes. Because, like I said, I only have about five of them, and one of them is about Robin Williams. Let's we'll see if I can find it here. A few of them are about Robin Williams, like, if I'm the pan, where's the pot, right? And this is, like, right around the time that he, is the day after he died. And then I did one about the the real-life Peter Pan, the guy who Peter Pan is based off of. He died at the age of 63. I did one with Snoop Dogg, and it was on April Fool's Day, right? So I just wrote, yo, it's April Fool's. I, I don't even know, like, what the deal was with these memes, but... The funny thing about the Snoop Dogg one was that after that 41-year-old virgin movie got over, there was a movie called The Wash that Snoop Dogg was on. So while I was writing, it was after I made this blog post talking about my old Facebook pictures, and I only have a few of, of them that are like that. One involves Snoop Dogg, and then a Snoop Dogg movie comes on, you know? And then the other one's about Robin Williams, who's important to August 11th. But, uh... Yeah, let's go back to this other post really quick. Yeah, so, anyway, I knew there was something significant to my Facebook pictures for some weird reason. I was having this weird, strange synchronicity with my old Facebook pictures. And I went to Zach's blog, and I noticed that he had this post about Jeremiah 19 in the Talmud, and also Jerusalem. And what stuck out to me was that just the night before, we were trying to watch this movie called Us, right? The Jordan Peele movie. 
Us film. So I was trying to watch this movie, but I fell asleep. And I, I watched like the first 10 minutes of the movie. But in the beginning of this movie, I, before I fell asleep, I noticed that there's a guy holding up a sign that says Jeremiah 1111. So I'm like, what are the odds of this? Zach documents about Jeremiah. He has no idea that it, that I watched this part of this movie where I noticed it says Jeremiah 1111. And if you go back to the post I made about Marilyn Manson in regards to this movie, it's called The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things. And the title comes from literally what's written in Jeremiah 17, 9. So I was like, what are the odds? You know, I go to Zach's blog and he's talking about Jeremiah 19. I fall asleep the night before and I see this Jeremiah 11, 11. Just after I document about this movie that is based off of Jeremiah. And what's so interesting about all of this and how we've been talking about how it's connected to the third temple, right? And possibly an attack in, you know, around Jerusalem, right? Well, the book of Jeremiah, he talks all about the destruction of Jerusalem. Even if you look up Jeremiah 11, 11, it says, Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will bring on them a disaster they cannot escape. Although they cry out to me, I will not listen, listen to them. And, you know, there's a conspiracy among the people of Judah and those who live in Jerusalem, right? So it's all about the destruction of Jerusalem. And hopefully this isn't confusing, but another picture I have on Facebook was of o Obama's old pastor named Jeremiah Wright. And if you recall, I can't remember what year it was, but he was under some flack at some time back in probably, when did I post this, 2008 for some of his sermons. And one of them was after the 9-11 attacks, and it was called The Day of Jerusalem's Fall, right? So Jeremiah, Zach's talking about, Zach makes a random post about the book of Jeremiah and this movie called Jerusalem that's coming out, that came out this year. And he's talking about it in regards to Tisha Bob and all these things we're talking about in regards to, you know, the third temple. And remember, Obama's full name, Barack o Hussein Obama II, equals 811 in English Extended Gematria. And he said that he was the Lion King when he was the president and whatnot, right? Think about that with Holly Selassie, Obama being the Lion King. World Lion Day is the same day as Tisha Bob begins on August 10th this year. And think about how, you know, 9-11 is synced up to Tisha Bob as well. Fall of Jerusalem. So some crazy weird synchronicity stuff going on. Like, I hope I explained that well enough, but, you know, I document about this the night before, and it's connected to the book of Jeremiah. I just want to re-explain this. Then, just before I fell asleep, we were watching this movie called Us in the opening scene. Within the first 10 minutes, or really close to it, I noticed that it says Jeremiah 11.11, and then the next night, Zach writes a blog post about the book of Jeremiah, and the book of Jeremiah is a lot to do with the destruction of Jerusalem, so. We'll leave the video there, I guess. I started making this video last night and then my son woke up and I had to quit. So it's been kind of confusing trying to finish it here and not refer to yesterday as today, if that makes sense, but. We'll leave it there. Just keep following these patterns because they're mind-blowing. So have a good one. Peace.